was to use artifacts in American history class to make history come alive. So we tried to create an environment in the classroom where they can do both of those things. They can be inspired to be proper citizens who are advocates for justice, for fairness, and we also want them to learn skills in the process. So our idea was to take artifacts and have the students examine the artifacts to figure out what the story is, what message does it have, what inspirational story does it have, how is it used and have the kids answer those questions or even ask their own questions. Um, and then do research that you'll later see that it was kind of controlled by us. We created a website so they learned the information we wanted them to learn. And at the same time, we wanted them to have differentiated text. So we applied for HP tablets. We ended up getting an iPad and we wanted them to read different texts at different levels. So each student was practicing his reading skills and also at the same time no one would know who was reading what because it was going to be done through what's called a QR code where you scan it and then it actually picks up a website and the kids clearly have no idea from the actual what looks like a barcode who's reading what. And by getting the artifacts into the kids hands it helps to make history more real for the kids. It mm -hmm. gives them more of a buy-in so it's not just a story that happened way in the past it's something they can touch and feel and and kind connect of contact with. with. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. And when they connect with it, uh, they have more of a personal uh, understanding or they take a little bit more of a, a personal belonging to what happened in history. It makes them more interested Engaged. in what happened, mm -hmm. right? Well, the artifacts just make the story more personal. It, it engages their interest. The minute you hand them something, they want to know what was it used for. Sometimes they don't even know what it is. And then it's they're practicing their skills. They have to figure out what do you think it is? Or you can also give them an artifact and ask them effects. Like a Civil War hat, you could give them a hat and say, what do you think the soldiers would have complained about this artifact? If they had to wear this, what would be their complaint? So they're practicing their skills again. Mm -hmm. I think they've, it's, it's just, especially to when you connect it with technology, it's perfect engagement. They're instantaneously engaged. And yeah, it's kind of interesting to see when the, when the kids are looking, just for example, again, the mini ball bullet, you see kids kind of pick it up and, and feel the weight of it and seeing kids kind of press it against themselves and try to imagine something like that flying at them in a battle, what these guys had to deal with. And I think it puts it in a better perspective. And it's a lot easier to remember because it's a story and it's personal so they have connections already. It's just easier to recall. All of the things that we've purchased are, none of it is consumable so it'll mm -hmm. be used over and over by, uh, by years and years of kids and so by providing the dollars and the funding for these things, uh, you're going to impact students and get them uh, to feel interested in history so they'll continue on in their studies hopefully beyond just eighth grade and and they'll they'll find you know there's a purpose for learning about history. I applied for this grant through the Education Foundation because I was hoping to get some quality literature for my English language learners. Um, I noticed that a lot of my students have a hard time with vocabulary and although we have wonderful books at our disposal with 65 students that I serve K through 5, there are always a shortage of books. Some of the individuals at my school have become very familiar with Jill Eggleton who is a famous um, researcher and um, author from Australia and New Zealand and so when we found her books were available and written specifically um, for the needs of students similar to mine. I thought that this grant would be a great opportunity to try to get those books in my classroom to use with my students. We received the grants in November and I think probably that day or the next day I went ahead and ordered them. I was so excited to get them for my classroom. I received over 200 books that are leveled for all of my students K through 5. I started using them immediately in small group, individual, and large group instruction and the results are remarkable. Um, these books are definitely tailored to these students. They are filled with vocabulary. There are fiction and nonfiction books that have pictures and illustrations that really um, encourage the reader to want to know more. They have um, wonderful keynotes for teachers, making it very easy to um, conduct small group lessons. And so those things combined have really 
amplified the small amount of time we were able to have together to make the most of it. And I've noticed that my kindergartners, which you will see, have increased their sight word knowledge tenfold this year. Um, it's been highly successful with them and with my other learners and I'm just pleased to be able to provide these resources to them. The author specifically tried to make books that are engaging for students to try to get them really excited about reading at a young age. So um, the great thing is usually when we get books, especially at the kindergarten age, they're very repetitive and they're very um, kind of predictable. Um, the same kind of patterns, the same kind of animals, um, there isn't a lot of variety and the great thing about these books is there's so much variety and it gets the kids excited because they're able to see things that they're interested in, they get to see actual real pictures or high quality illustrations. These books are made um, to really excite the learner and as you can see they are so excited. They want to know what's going to happen next. They're picking up on so much vocabulary. These books would not have been possible for me to purchase without a grant. Um, as I look around my classroom, I can see plenty of things that I've purchased with my own money, but there are um, some really high quality things that we know work well for kids, but the problem is they are very, very expensive. These books for less than 200 titles or about 200 titles was approximately $1,000. So that's not something I would be able to afford on my own. Um, and it's hard to pick and choose, you know, just one book or a couple of books, which grade level would I choose, um, you know, which students deserve these and others don't. There's no way you can decide that. So when the Education Foundation put out this grant, I thought this would be the great opportunity for something that I know is research-based, works well with kids. Um, I've seen it work in other classrooms, and so I thought this is the perfect opportunity. Well, I, I taught for uh, eight years in Las Vegas. and. Uh, seven years in the district down there and I had a good friend uh, who had his own electric program as part of his program and uh, there are actually several in in Las Vegas it's a huge district of course. and there's none here um, so I thought oh, why not, not why not try one the reason I wanted to do it is just because it didn't exist yet and uh, it's something I have an interest in I don't know everything about it but I figured we could learn along with the kids and and uh, you know make an electric group happen here at Axtell Park the benefit was um, uh, for recruiting um, for uh, Different ways of performing uh, for audiences, and to allow students the you know the opportunity to have experience with uh, a technology that's pretty much ubiquitous with modern music today. And if you look, uh, if you listen to the radio, you're you're talking about people who have hundreds of thousand dollars of equipment, if not personnel behind them, making the sound happen. And you know, stream music is fantastic. It's 400 year old technology. It still works great, um, but. We have to bring a little bit of modernity to uh, our students, so the, the pickups were a way to do that. They, they uh, attach to the instruments, um, any of the instruments from the basses, cellos, and violins, and uh, allow you to be electrified immediately. And from there, if you, you, know, you run it through a computer effects board, you can do that. Um, you can um, uh, perform modern music with a modern sound. I mean, certainly you could play um, any, any rock and roll song on, a, on a string instruments that aren't amplified, but once you put the amplification in there, now you have to worry about uh, distortion and sound quality and all those other things that you, you work with when you're, you're doing electrified music. Uh, the budget money for orchestra is, um, is spent on repairs and replacements um, and strings, and those, those pr pr pretty much sap the budget. The rest is music and um, you know, little things like a rosin or a shoulder rest. I actually. I spent my, uh, as a brand new teacher, I got a $200 stipend, <clears throat> and I spent all of that money on shoulder rests, because um, up to this point, kids have been using foam blocks, and, and that's, uh, if you're a violinist or a violist, you know that that's uh, not enough. You need a little more stability there. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is I spent a lot of my money on some of the basic things that you need for an orchestra to be successful. This um, kind of project is, is definitely extra. So yes, it, this project couldn't have happened without a grant. And so for our, our, for our benefactors, for the businesses and for the, the foundation and all of the organizations that back up this grant process, um, we'd love to meet you and thank you personally. And if not, I hope this video gets to them too. Um, but I, I make sure that my students know that you know, this stuff isn't possible without that kind of extra help. And um, we live in a time where there seems to be less and less money for education. And uh, it's just amazing to have that kind of support. 
uh, from a community and have that keep on, keep on going because it can be so hard to find uh, that kind of extra support. I can't say thank you enough to the foundation and all of the sponsors. Um, their gifts to us are make what we do even better. We can't possibly say thank you enough. Um, but without such a contributing community that is so willing to instill um, money and support into our schools, that's the reason why we're able to do what we can do. That's the reason why Sioux Falls Public Schools are as successful as they are is because of the wonderful contributions of our community. We really are in partnership with each other and um, we hope that that continues in the future because it's making a big difference in the lives of our students. Well, you thank you so much for being interested in the, the lives and the education of students here in Sioux Falls. And by providing your grant, you've made uh, education more meaningful to the students who come in contact with the, the things that we've been able to assemble through the grant. And I would just thank you for the inspiration for us as, as staff members to the possibility to continue to become professionals who are masters in our trade. That's, that's, I think, what both of us want to do mm -hmm. is to continually develop our curriculum and not settle. And we thank you for that opportunity. Mm -hmm.